Now let us hear from that same Jesus. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though he will not get up and give him the bread because he is his friend, yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. For which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead, or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion. If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the gospel of the Lord. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, my Lord, my rock, and my Redeemer. Amen. Well, friends, I got a question for you. It's the same question that Michelle asked earlier on. How comfortable are you praying? I'll say this, that when I became a Christian, I realized that there are kind of things that Christians do, and one of those things is praying. And I didn't uh, grow up praying, so I didn't know exactly how that's supposed to work. And what I found is, is that, you know, if you start praying, and you start going to church, every now and again someone might ask you, like, well, why don't you pray for this or that? Why don't you pray for this thing we're about to do. Why did you pray over the meal? So on and so forth. And I know that I, uh, at that moment, had this desire in my heart to not look like a stupid idiot while I was doing it. (laughs) It was very important to me because I felt like if you stand up in front of people and talk, and as you see, I do that from time to time, and if you are forced to stand up in front of people and talk, maybe the number one priority that most of us have is just not looking dumb while we do it. And it's actually, it seems, I think, harder than we would have imagined. When it comes time to pray, we often don't know how to pray as we should. And when the disciples are with Jesus, they want to know, how should we do this? How do we go about it? Now, I don't know what was in the hearts of the disciples. Maybe they were like me saying, you know, Jesus keeps having us go in these situations where we're supposed to pray, and we don't want to sound dumb while we're doing it. But I imagine that uh, what they actually had was in Jesus, they had this model of someone who was praying, and they felt, man, what he's doing is different than what I'm doing. And I want to know how to pray because I want to have that kind of uh, intimacy, that ability to speak to God in the way that I speak to normal people. And it's so hard to know how to do it, and, and not only how I should go about praying, but what I should expect when I do. Because I think we have a lot of unspoken expectations about prayer. Ones that we're often kind of uncomfortable to talk about too openly. Because we don't know exactly what we can expect. And Jesus does the greatest job ever of teaching on prayer. Hey, imagine that. Jesus himself is good at teaching about prayer. But it isn't just that he teaches a way to pray. But he goes on to show us kind of what we might expect. Well, let's look at that together uh, today. See, Jesus uh, starts out with his disciples who are asking him, Lord, teach us how to pray. We see other people who are learning their faith from their teachers. They teach them how to pray. Teach us as well. And Jesus uh, tells them these words that you probably know as the Lord's Prayer, uh, a very, very common prayer, the Our Father. And he teaches them uh, very, very simply. When you pray, pray like this. But it's what happens after that That is really the incredible teaching that Jesus offers. The the prayer is a great prayer, and it's worthy of our emulation. He gives them a model that they can follow, and then teaches them, this is how you should go about this. 
He invites him to have a, uh, a life of prayer that's like his own life of prayer. And it begins uh, with this, that it begins with faith. That faith is the first and foremost part of, of prayer. As a matter of fact, it might be the only part of prayer when we stop and think about it, because prayer has to be engaged faithfully. Otherwise, it isn't prayer. You know, we can certainly uh, learn to uh, offer up our requests or our desires to God, but we have to engage it believing that there's a God who hears. It has to be faith before it can be prayer. Otherwise, it's just speaking out our intentions and desires out into the ether. And you know what? They generally don't echo back to us. So instead, we need to engage this first with the belief that there's a Father in, in heaven who is going to hear our prayer, and then that he's going to act. But Jesus explains this prayer in this way. He says, he says something very confusing. If you imagine being in this situation, friend comes to you at midnight, right, and, uh, and says, hey, I need three loaves of bread. I can't imagine a stranger way to start a story, ever. And uh, that the idea that someone's going to show up at my house at midnight asking for bread, I would fake gluten-free at that moment. I'd be like, you're at the wrong house, bro, no gluten. No gluten, no English. Move it on down the line. I'm sure my Amish neighbors got some bread for you. They may be up right now baking it. But for the rest of us, the, the idea that someone's, that it's, this is okay is, of course, so ridiculous. That's the beginning of, of, of his teaching on what prayer is like. That prayer is going to have something of a ridiculous character. And if we pray in faith, then it might actually be very reasonable for us to feel like, man, I might be overstepping my boundaries here. That's exactly what prayer is like. I'll tell you, when I uh, first wanted to learn how to, prayer, uh, how to pray excuse me, in public, it was because I was being asked to do it at my local church. And so I would go up and, and help out in certain parts of the service, and one of those things was often with prayer. And there was someone there who I, I just thought was the greatest at praying. It was this woman, Perio Carlisle, very faithful, very strong uh, Christian woman. And when she would pray, I would just be like, that was a perfect prayer. Man, that was a perfect prayer. And I remember being asked uh, to do this, and I, I thought, I'm going to go up to her. She is the kind of person that I would want to emulate in my own prayers. She's going to be the pattern for how I do this. So I walk up to her after a service one day, after she had prayed, and I, I remember thinking in my heart, like, I hope that she tells me, like, here's the formatting. You want to say this, then this, then this, and so on and so forth. And here's the, the flow chart. Let's go to that. To make prayer really formulaic and easy to understand so that I could do it right, I could do it well, and I could not look dumb while I'm doing it. And she did for me the same thing that Jesus is doing for us today. She gave me some answer that had what I thought at the time was absolutely nothing to do with my request. She didn't say, okay, first you want to start with th these words and you want to end with that. What she said is, you're going to know when you know how to pray, but it all begins with loving those who, for whom you're praying. And I remember thinking, I, I remember saying, thank you. <laughs> and thinking, that isn't what I wanted. <laughs> and then being afraid to point that out to her because I didn't want to sound like an idiot. Instead, I was like, yes, okay, that's, uh, that's very holy. I'm going to keep doing that. Thank you very much. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, it was many, many years later that we had a conversation and she had said, you know, now you pray like I knew that you would. And I was like, man, thank you, because your first answer was so unhelpful. And I was, <laughs> I was afraid to mention it at the moment that that's not what I was looking for. But what I found is that she was actually right, that it was a very different affair, this thing that I thought praying was something that, well, I just needed to learn the pattern, and then I would have it down. That there was a way to, in a sense, fake a relationship with God because I knew the steps that I had to take instead of the life that I had to live with him. And Jesus corrects us because he gives us this prayer, and it's a wonderful prayer. I mean, it's hard to imagine words you could come up with that are better than the words of God's Son. But he doesn't stop at this place. He points us to this faith, and then he points us a little bit deeper, and he says, you know what? Praying is going to be like this guy asking for the loaves of bread. It's a ridiculous, quest, a ridiculous request on the part of this fellow. It's dumb. He shouldn't be asking for it. But he does. And you know what, how the story ends? He gets the bread. He gets what he's seeking, 
And what Jesus is telling us is that is it is not for the quality of our requests that we are heard and answered. It isn't that we know the right formula. It isn't that we know how to not sound dumb. It's that when we pray in faith, we have to know that God isn't going to be judging us based upon how cool we sound when we're doing it. He isn't going to be judging us based on the pattern that we follow. In some churches, it might be in King James English, our Father who art in heaven. And in other churches, it may be uh, Father God, I just. And at the end of the day, what matters is not the way that it sounds to our ear, but that God himself is in heaven listening to our prayers and answering them. And because of that, we can trust that this is going to work. It's worth praying. And we can live out our faith through this means. But I'll tell you what, you know, sometimes we do ask for unreasonable things when we pray, and God's fine with that. In a weird way, it is the depth of the things that we ask for that reflect the kind of confidence and faith that we have in God. I have often heard uh, of, of very simple prayers for very simple things, and I don't know that, uh, that those are always the most faithful. It's the prayers, rather, that stretch us, that are more like the, the midnight snack prayer of, Lord, give me bread at an unreasonable hour. Because those are really the prayers, I think, that, that drive us to God. They're not the ones that could be answered by some other means. They're proof in a weird way that we know enough about God to know when it's time to reach out to Him. Those prayers for healing, those are unreasonable prayers. Because, well, what, what right do we have to ask for them? And who would hope for such a thing? When the doctors say one thing, but our hearts desire another, we're driven to a kind of prayer that is very faithful, but certainly doesn't seem reasonable. But Jesus says, that's, that's real prayer. And so, step by step, he's trying to teach us what real faith is in a relationship and in a conversation with God. Now, if that wasn't enough, things start getting weirder in the story that Jesus is telling as well, because while he's teaching on prayer, it isn't enough that, that it's like this guy uh, asking for bread, but he promises these things. He says, ask, seek, and knock, right? Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. For, uh, for he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. And I'll tell you, it is just exactly that kind of a prayer where we're at our end, where we're no longer sure that if we ask, seek, or knock, that we're going to hear a response from God. But real, deep Christian prayer, a real, deep relationship to God begins to take shape. Because I'll tell you what, I don't know how you feel, but I often wonder if I ask God if he will respond to me. Because I've, I've offered a lot of prayers. I don't always hear back the answer that I expect. And I've heard uh, folks teach about uh, prayer and, and trying to make it simple. And God bless them, because if you can make something that's, that's complex, simple, I feel like that's a smart thing. People will say, you know, God answers prayer in one of three ways. Three, you know, he's going to say yes. That's a good kind of answer. He's going to say no. Sometimes you need it. He's going to say not yet. And I think, man, I wish it was that simple. I wish it were that simple. As a matter of fact, Jesus seems to be telling us something a little bit different. That, yeah, God can answer, I suppose, in any way. And he could say yes. But he doesn't always. And he could say no. But sometimes he isn't so clear. And the idea that we're simply just not on his timetable maybe isn't the end of the teaching as well. He promises an answer, but then he goes on to say, I think, the weirdest part of this teaching, but maybe the most important. He says this, he says, Which of you fathers, you dads out there, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Now listen, that'd be kind of funny. So... You're forgiven if you do, not a live one, nothing poisonous, but come on. Look, who's, whose kid is out there asking for a fish? Dad, can I have a fish? I feel like you're being irresponsible enough if you say yes. Mom's going to kill you. 
The, the kitchen is not going to be in good shape if you're handing over fish to your kids. Uh, and then the, and the next one, or if he asked for an egg, we'll give him a scorpion. First off, dads, how many of you have a scorpion? And second off, what kind of egg are we working with? Is this thing hard boiled? It's a, it is a strange dialogue. Who talks like this? It's almost as if what Jesus is trying to say is so different from what we would expect. And as a matter of fact, what God is trying to do for us is so different from what we expect that he has to put us on our toes. Now, how many fathers, he, he's basically saying this, when their kids have a need, and you know what that need is, how many of you guys are going to give them something worse? And I think in our hearts, we'd say, well, I hope none of us. As a father, I'd, I'd like to make sure that I'm taking care of my kids. But he says, that if you then, if you and I who are evil, that is to say, we're inclined towards the wrong things continuously. We, we care maybe a little bit too much about ourselves and not enough about other things. But if in the case of our own children, we are going to be good to them. We're not going to fail them in this way. How much more will God in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Wait a second. Where in the world is the, were the disciples asking about the Holy Spirit? What does that have to do with anything, teaching him about prayer? It's a strange thing that Jesus uh, gives this response that has nothing to do with any of the words that happened before it. But this, friends, is the magic of Jesus' teaching on this topic. Because you know already this much, that if you have ever prayed, if you have ever prayed in faith and asked God for something that you, you know that maybe you don't have the right to ask him for, if you'd asked him for something that seemed beyond even his capacity to give, if you've asked and waited for an answer and not felt like you received the answer that you had hoped for, that is to say, if you've really prayed, then I guarantee you, you've got an answer different at one time or another than what you sought from God. Sometimes when we pray, God, though he answers, doesn't answer as we would expect. You pray for healing, and God gives you faith, and he gives you patience. You ask God for help, but he gives strength instead. You ask God to take away the difficult thing that you're going through in your life, and he instead gives you courage and hope. Not what you asked for, but what you really needed. And if you know how to give the right things to the people that you love, then you can trust that God in heaven, when he does answer, and that answer isn't the one that you asked for, and it wasn't the one that you were seeking, but it's the one that you got, is what God knows that you need above everything else. And this is real prayer, guys. You know, real prayer isn't defined by how we go about it, our intentions and our holiness, and the words that we use, and the strength of our faith, but in the promise of God to hear our prayer, and to answer that prayer, and then to give us what he knows that we need. And he says, the Father will give you the Holy Spirit. So here's a question. What's the Holy Spirit? And that may seem like another sermon, but it's important to, to, to end on this because it, Jesus thought that this is worth ending on. The Spirit, we believe, is how God calls us together in community. It's how he gathers us into his church, that is, points us continuously to him through Jesus. And he enlightens us with his gifts. That he shows us by faith what truth is. And that no matter what you pray for, what you desire to see in your life, God is going to be using his spirit in you and for you and through you to answer your prayer, to bring you into fellowship with God and with each other. And open your eyes, the eyes of faith, 
to see him at work for your blessing and your benefit. And that may not be the teaching that we all wanted on prayer, but it's the one that we needed because it is the truth of prayer and it's the one that our suspicions and our hearts they needed to hear. The truth that though we may pray for a number of things, God is better than simply answering our prayer, yes, no, or not now. But he's going to give us the things that we truly need. And so let us offer a prayer to that same God. Lord, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that you do answer prayer, that you uh, hear our prayers and you promise, and you follow through on that promise that you will indeed answer. And that answer, Lord, we know it has not always been exactly what we had hoped that it would be. But we also are able to look back and to see that what you've given has been enough. It was the right thing for the time. Lord, through what we experienced, whether we were saved from it or through it, or whether we experienced it and went all the way, Lord, you were there for us. And with your Spirit, you guide us into that knowledge and you guide us together in love towards one another and love towards you. So, Lord, help us uh, to grow in that faith, to open the eyes of faith within our hearts, to see you at work, that we may know you better. Bless us in these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now I'm going to ask you to stand.